Let's look at the social homeostasis circuit through the lens of what's commonly called introversion and extroversion. So we really can't predict whether or not somebody is an introvert or an extrovert simply based on their behavior. It's really more of an internal subjective label. Whereas the extrovert, we can reasonably assume, releases less dopamine in response to an individual social interaction. Let's look at the social homeostasis circuit through the lens of what's commonly called introversion and extroversion. Typically, when we hear about introverts, we think about the quiet person at the party or the person that doesn't want to go out at all. And we think about an extrovert as somebody who's really social, the so-called social butterfly, who enjoys social interactions, is really chatty, is kind of life of the party type person. That's the cliche or the kind of pop psychology cliche. But actually in the psychology literature, that's not really the way it holds up. Many people who appear introverted are actually extroverted. The quiet person at a party could be an extrovert, except that they just don't talk very much. The characteristic of an extrovert is somebody that gets energy or feels good from social interactions. They sort of get a lift. And we can predict that that lift occurs because of some release of dopamine within their brain and body. And indeed, there's evidence for that. Neuroimaging studies support that. Other forms of neurobiological analysis support that as well. We can also imagine that the person who's talking a lot is somebody who's very extroverted. But oftentimes people who talk a lot for their work or they're somebody who's very social when you interact with them, that person gets back to their car and is absolutely depleted and exhausted by that interaction or also sorts of social interactions. So we really can't predict whether or not somebody is an introvert or an extrovert simply based on their behavior. It's really more of an internal subjective label. However, if we look at introversion and extroversion through this lens of the social homeostatic set point, and we think about dopamine as this molecule that drives motivation to seek out social interactions, what we can reasonably assume is that introverts are people that when they engage in certain forms of social interaction, either the amount of dopamine that's released is greater than it is in an extrovert. That's right, I said greater than it is in an extrovert. And so they actually feel quite motivated, but also satisfied by very brief or we could say uh, sort of sparse social interactions. They don't need a lot of social engagement to feel sated. Again, the parallel example would be hunger. This would be somebody who doesn't need to eat much in order to feel satisfied. Whereas the extrovert, we can reasonably assume, releases less dopamine in response to an individual social interaction. And so they need much more social interaction in order to feel filled up by that interaction. And indeed, this is supported by the neurobiological imaging studies. So rather than think about introverts and extroverts as chatty versus quiet, it's useful to think about people, maybe yourself, maybe other people you know, as how much social interaction they need in order to bring this social homeostasis into balance.